Hi, Kylie. Hello. We're here with Kylie Brinkman. How you doing? Great. In the background is this crazy, crazy cough machine. Coffee machine, yeah. <laughs> and basically it sounds like a dragon, if you hear that in the background. It's pretty loud. Yes. It's going to spit fire any second. I'm wait- I hope it does not. <laughs> then the fish would not like that. Oh, it's dying down a little. Yeah, it's kind of funny, though. But if you hear this weird noise, it's the dragon coffee machine in the background. Kylie, how you doing? Doing good. Yourself? I'm a little tired, but I'm good. <laughs> Me too. It's past my nap time. Well, I I I think I, I like I will start working and like I won't think about anything else about work and like I will, I feel like I think I shut it down at like seven a.m. and then yeah. I said you know what I can't go to sleep <laughs> mm-hmm. you know so I just didn't do it so <laughs> Kylie is she said she was a little nervous and um yeah. you know she and I said well why she says well the last time I did this go ahead and say it. <clears throat> When's the last time you did this? I was a senior in high school. Okay. <laughs> did okay. a radio spot for 4-H because as okay. I was mentioning before, I'm a, I'm a nerd like that. So. Well, that's not bad. Like To <laughs> me, that's not bad at all. But I, I, I'm, I'm having her say this because she was explaining. I was like, I want people to hear this again. Yeah, so I was in 4-H. Because uh, this, uh, this is actually kind of <laughs> really something people should hear. So I'm going to shut up. So go ahead. Yeah, I was in 4-H from the fourth grade all the way through high school. For um, people that don't know what 4-H is, it's, tell uh, them what it is. So it's a club that you join, um, and there's different projects that you can take on. A lot of people think of livestock, right? but I didn't have live, livestock. I had um, projects like photography and child mm-hmm. development and citizenship, so... I actually did interviews with the mayor of the big town of Church Point okay. and other prominent people in the big old town of Church Point <laughs> back okay. in the day. And um, I was the reporter. And um, wait, let's see. Okay, I back, could see that too. Re- reporter Kylie Brinkman <laughs> coming to you live. Yeah, it was great. I won a lot of awards. Um, I was president of the 4 H club like my seventh and eighth grade year. And then <clears> tenth <throat> grade through senior year through twelfth grade, I was a reporter, and I won a, an award for my reporter scrapbook. Mm-hmm. I also won awards in photography. Um, I went to state with my uh, photography project. Okay. So we, I got to go to this big thing in Baton Rouge, but. Um, and you don't take pictures today. Uh, you know, I do, but I kind of got out of it, <laughs> but I do miss okay. it. I really enjoyed it. Um, but I do miss it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm more of a nature photographer type of person. I used to have my camera on me all the time. And if I saw a cool looking tree, um, and I felt like I could relate to that tree, I, had, I got out of my car and I took a picture of it. <laughs> Cause again, I'm a nerd. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that though. Like, I like I, I don't I, usually, <laughs> usually I'm putting myself in a lot of the dangerous situations mm-hmm. to take pictures. Like I've people been there. Don't, people don't realize it, you know. Like, but you do. Like, yeah. I, I, one time I almost put my car in a crawfish pond. <laughs> oh, like my half of my tires were off of the road inside the pond. Well, that's not good. And like I was leaning <laughs> in, out on the edge of the door to get like you know a really cool picture, and I realized I was like, wow. I'm like literally almost in this pond, but that's what you do to get these pictures. And because some people look at these pictures and they go, "Wait, dude, how how did that happen? I know where this is. How did that happen?" Yeah. So <clears throat> I don't know how many times I've stopped in the middle of the road, threw the hazard lights on, and everyone here wants to help you. So like they don't just go; they stop right yeah. in the middle of your shot, <laughs> and you go, "Thank you." <laughs> Go yeah. ahead, keep going, please. <laughs> I'm just a crazy person right. with my camera. <laughs> yeah, and that—that's the stuff that we have to deal with. But, but no, I know what you're saying, you know. But I think you should keep telling you to take pictures. Yeah, I just looked at some old pictures that I had developed. Um, you know, like at Kmart back in the day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't even know what Kmart is. <laughs> Kmart, anymore. and uh, there was this other place. They they had really good prices on development. Because, I mean, I took so many pictures, and... And these were not digital? These were, no, this was 
way before digital. You couldn't look at it and mm-hmm. say, oh, no, I don't like that. I need to take another right. picture. You had to take a chance. And, you know, I was looking back at some old pictures, and I was like, I actually took some pretty good photos back in the day. <laughs> so I was actually pretty impressed when yeah. I was looking at my at my stuff, you know. So, um, yeah, I do miss that. Yeah. So. I, I think you need to go do that. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I've thought about it, yeah. Yeah. Thought about getting back into it. So. Brinkman photography. <laughs> hey, it's got a nice ring to it. I think you <laughs> should. I think you should do this. I didn't even know this. Like, you should do that. Yeah. M- make that happen. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you should do it. There's very few people who have ever taken pictures out, outside of digital and... I I think that would be well perceived here, you know. For some people, um, I I really do because you know, today I I even see people. You know, they'll just somebody just got a new Sony and they it's got eleven frames per second and they you know they go out on the sideline and they shoot eight thousand pictures of like one quarter yeah. of a football game <laughs> and then they got to go through eight thousand pictures. I'm like, dude, yeah. you're crazy, <laughs> you know. To be able to know when that photo needs to be taken, it, mm-hmm. it, to, to me, that's that's something that is within a person. Um, yeah, I've always because um, anybody had to drive could sit there and a lot yeah. for work. You know, I'd, mm-hmm. I'd be on the road all the time. I'm, I'm I'm used to being on the road. I'm a road warrior, so um, that's why you need a camera. With that, I would always have my camera on me, mm-hmm. and so that's why I always would stop in these weird places. And I remember one time there was this little abandoned cemetery um i don't know it was down some back road from arneville coming back into lafayette and i don't remember the name of the highway but i thought gosh this would make such a great picture you Mm -hmm. know this abandoned cemetery to me it tells a story and i wanted to stop my car so bad and take a picture but i only have my phone and my phone doesn't take very good pictures so um in that instance i was like darn i wish i had a camera yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you never know. You could have, you know, rolled you up, had an rolled up, winning photo, you know? rolled up on Jim Bob, and they could have been <laughs> dropping a body up in the funeral. I might have had oh, a couple oh, orbs in it. <laughs> well, see, and people don't know about that. Like, people don't know how to photograph that. So, like, that's it's very. Well, if you go to New Orleans too, you take mm-hmm. pictures anywhere in New Orleans. You're bound to, out of a few pictures, you're bound to see a couple of little mm-hmm. orbs in there. You know, <laughs> I've taken some. I have some. I, it's extremely hard to get them in digital, but I've got one of them that is like literally like amazing. That's you know? awesome. Um, very crazy, even crazier because it was on stage. Wow. You know, um, and the previous uh, musician died the year before, and it was the first year that he was not playing with that band. Awesome. Well, so it was like even. Well, it was really interesting because, um, like, I remember that night, and it was really dark on the stage, and there was nothing in that area except this particular keyboard player. And he he has the biggest smile on his face, and, and literally this thing is right in front of his face, right next to his head, hmm. kind of like it was there with him. Oh, yeah. And, and he he was pretty touched by it. When he saw it, and I was like, "Man, you're never gonna believe this!" Like, I, I didn't believe it. But pe- people get nervous when they s- talk about stuff like this, you know. Um, I, I mean, I've seen orb pictures that are just like incredible. The most incredible picture I've ever seen of an orb, of or, I would say orbs. <laughs> Plural. It really was at the more at the Myrtles, which made me realize that the Myrtles is actually a portal. Ah, um, gotcha. A, a portal gate system. Mm-hmm. Um, the front That's door. Even more to, scary, though. <laughs> to me, it's not scary. I mean, to me, it's you know, um, the other side to me is 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 actually more peaceful than half of the people that are actually physical on this planet. <laughs> to me, sometimes the stuff we talk I'm, about I'm that we not that. Where, uh, we're not ready for, right? But no, I'm serious. Like it's it's interesting to me because like I, I've been interested in a lot of these things since I was a child, so. I've gotten through all that fear, you know, all the all the weird fear, I call mm-hmm. it. Um, 
I, I mean, I couldn't even go into some of the stuff I've seen and, and done in that realm of life. But I can tell you that being fearful of that is not a good idea. And the reason why is because that's where you're going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so don't be afraid of where you're going because it's eventually going to take place. You know, And that's what I like to tell people because it's true. I mean, but some of the photography I've seen of the place... It literally, like, like, they talk about north and south entrances in this particular place. Now watch, everybody's going to go to Myrtles and that hears this. <laughs> we have a lot of people that listen to the station from Germany and Switzerland. Ah, I'm actually... Switzerland, in Germany, and, um... Well, Brinkman, And, you know, just <laughs> those those other countries. And that's why we love Radio Louisiana, because they, they love Louisiana music. So that's if awesome. you're listening thank from you. those countries, thank you. <laughs> so, But no, I'm serious, um... These north and south portal, like the front door and the back door, I've never been yet, which is crazy. I can't believe I've never been there yet, but I'm going to go. And I'm probably going to spend a weekend just to check it out. And I'm going to bring EVP, and we're going to have some fun. <laughs> you know, so, um, so, but no, I mean, to me, the north and south entrance is really a, a portal gateway system. Um, and what's really amazing, you know, if somebody does want to go out there and really you know, get the fear out of themselves. I would recommend taking pictures um, at probably about 400 ISO at 3.33 in the morning. At two different times, actually. About <laughs> 11... The at, time when the ghosts uh, really like to... Well, well that, they call it the witching hour, <laughs> yeah. but but it's really not. You know, I mean, I, I think that, you know, people... They, the time I don't when you know, hear the just, knocking on the walls, 3.33. Yeah. <laughs> so, to me, that was like just a reason to get mom out of the room. But it's funny because <laughs> that's actually like an angelic number. It's a sequential so, number, right? You know. So, you know, I mean... But what I'm saying, like 11.58... <laughs> is another time that I find very, very interesting. So I would say 11.58. I would say get ready for 11.50 uh, and <laughs> shoot photos from 11.50 to 12.15. And then your second roam will be, don't look at the pictures either. Don't look at them. Ch chill out, relax. After that first stage is over what you relax, chill out. And then come into about 2.30 and get ready. Make sure all your stuff has a good battery because, weirdly enough, your batteries do go dead when you're doing stuff like this. I don't know why, mm -hmm. but the whole battery will be dead. Yeah. Don't know what that means, but it does happen. So make sure your batteries are charged <laughs> and then come in to 3 o'clock and 3.15 and 3, 3.20, checking them again. It sounds weird, but it's true. See, Ky Kylie, we're, we're, we're talking about all kind of weird stuff. <laughs> But no, um, it is fun. It is fun. Um, I think physically some of the weirdest places I've ever been were in Mississippi. Um, but, you know, once again, I've been in, hey, look, in Washington, Louisiana, it's just as weird. Mm. It really is, you know. Um, just anywhere that people have lived, it can be weird. So let's talk about what we're here to talk about. So now they're, gonna, they're like, no, keep talking about this. People people love to hear about stuff like this, you know. Um. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's the unknown, you know. It's intriguing. It's fun to me, though. we don't know everything though. about it, so it's, well, it's you know, but, until we get there. <clears throat> some of us know way too much about it. <laughs> but no, I'm just joking. Um, let me see. I asked Kylie a list of questions, and um, I asked her to list a few things that she'd like to talk about. One of the things that Kylie does, I, Kylie, Kylie, you go from 4-H to becoming a belly dancer. <laughs> yes, I was actually... How on. did that happen? I got, I got to know this. <laughs> well, I've danced on and off my whole life. Uh -huh. um, when I was younger, I had tab, jazz, and ballet, and... I honestly was never really a ballerina. I've always had two left feet mm -hmm. when it comes to ballet. Uh, when I was in, in high school, I was on the dance team for four years. Um, and we mostly did jazz, hip-hop, kick routines, stuff like that. And uh, I loved it. And 
They had hip hop dance routines at, at oh, when you were yeah. in high school. Oh yeah, we danced to hip hop. I don't remember jazz, that. But, oh yeah, we we did it. We I just don't remember that. We we got our groove on for mm-hmm. sure, <laughs> and it was fun. Okay. Um. So you've been dancing for over twenty five years. I've been dancing for a while. Okay. And um, I after high school, I kind of kept trying to. I had a Paula Abdul workout tape. VHS tape <laughs> that I managed to continue you, on with my dance moves. <laughs> you really through, need to figure out where Paula. that's at. You need to find that again. <laughs> and I, um, when I started college, I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do. So I was in general studies, and I started at LSU E, uh, LSU at Eunice, and <clears throat> and then I transferred over to UL. When I went to University of Louisiana or USL. Um, I I wanted to do something that I was passionate about, and I wanted to follow my heart because you hear that all the time: follow your heart, mm-hmm. do what you want. You know, that dance. That was what I wanted. So I was a dance major at UL for a couple years, and <clears throat> it was pretty rough. It, it wasn't anything like what I thought it would be, but I did enjoy it. But when I started to kind of become a little miserable with it, um, I said, well, maybe this really isn't the path that I, it's not for me. You know, this world is not for me. Um, I got to know. So. What was hard about it? It It's. Like, what did you uh, expect and what did you think? What, what, what would happen? I'm the curious. mentality of, you know, like, I think dance is an art form that is taken way too lightly. Um, okay. I don't think people really take it as seriously as, say, like, you know, basketball, baseball, football. Right. You know, here we are, we're drilling our bodies every day to do something that football mm-hmm. players would do. That, you know, and... And actually we sometimes didn't worse. have the benefits. Yeah. Right. And we didn't have the benefits or the health benefits or the, the accolades that all of the athletes got. Right. But we're technically athletes. You know, dancers are athletes, mm-hmm. but... Um, I just feel like it's an underrated art form. <clears throat> um, well, unless you're in New York. <laughs> <laughs> right. And yeah. a lot of the teachers were from New York. and They probably the feel the attitude, same way you do. You know, it's like, okay, you cannot have a donut. You have to eat this or eat that. And right. I've never been the type of person where somebody can just can dictate to me what to do. I don't like to, right. I don't like for people to tell me what to do. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, um, I can follow the rules. I can, you know, but... I I just didn't like um, the way that some of the teachers were talking to some of the girls and yeah. about what they ate and this and that. And I just felt like it was kind of a harsh world. And it wasn't something that I personally wanted to be a part of or mm-hmm. that I felt like I could be a part of. So I left um, school for, I guess I took a break for about a semester. And then um, while I was on break, I discovered what was called Gumbo U, which is now Potpourri, which is, um, they have all these really cool classes you can take. Right. I know what you're talking about. photography classes. I took an, it- from an Italian Karate language to- course on that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> an amazing uh, program that UL <clears throat> offers for, you know, for anyone. Um, and I noticed they had belly dancing classes, so I was like, uh, I've got to check this out. This looks fun. And I took my very first class, and after that, I was like, you know, this is awesome. It's amazing. I can be mm-hmm. myself. I can, you know, come here. And it was just extremely laid, laid back. Um, you know, I felt for the first time in, in a while, I just felt like it was awesome to be a woman and celebrating femininity. And I felt sexy and cool. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah, and actually... Um, that class that I took, uh, one of my dance sisters was also in that class. That's how we met, and mm-hmm. we still dance together to this day. Her name is Ilea, which you may know Ilea. But um, we took that class together, and that's how we discovered the world of belly dance. <laughs> so you found what what you were looking for? <clears throat> I think I did, you know, in that. Um, I mean, you probably... Since then, I've, I've grown yeah. a lot, you know, and have been able to take workshops and... Um, you know, I've, uh, I'm in a tribal fusion um, mm-hmm. group, which <clears throat> what it is is fusing, you know, different dance influences like hip-hop and jazz and 
uh, ballet mm-hmm. even, you know, and taking those things and fusing it into belly dance as well. So you're, um, you have some different influences there and it's just, it's so much fun. I don't know. For me, it's just fun. I, I, I've never wanted it to really be taken too seriously. So, right. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so I knew if, you know, if I wanted to continue on with it, you know, you'd probably have to go to New York or something like that, you know, and right. But, uh, I mean, I, st- I appreciate ballet. I'm, I'm actually, I just started taking ballet classes again, um, and as well as jazz and uh, a hip-hop class, too. So uh, it's a lot of fun. I've, I've missed kind of going, you know, sometimes you kind of get stuck in a cycle, and it's all the same thing, and it just feels like, you know, it's, it's like you're going through the motions. So I wanted to uh, challenge myself again. And mm. So I've gone back into... Um, ballet because I really appreciate it for for the art form that it is and it's great for toning and you know it's really a, it's a it's a wonderful art form so um, I'm enjoying the class I'm enjoying uh, the diversity and it's been inspirational too along with the belly dancing let's go into this you have music here what about music did you want to talk about? I guess just um, music has always been an inspiration, you know, before dance mm-hmm. ever was. Music was always kind of like, and I think, uh, you know, most people who really love and appreciate music uh, of any kind um, would would feel this way. I, I think most people need some kind of outlet outside of your everyday life and yeah. drama you know it, and music has always been sort of like a savior <laughs> yeah. for me it is a part of life it, it really is as much as i've heard the negativity of the past you know about music well it's um, so universal it, it yeah. doesn't matter who you are um, I mean, or where you're at you're in germany you're in the u.s you're any part of the world um, music is yeah. a unifying element in it's our world kind of, so it's kind of weird, but like <laughs> I have people that know me that like to pick with me and put me on dating sites. Like oh. every once in a while, I'll see a, <laughs> I'll get a weird email, and I'm like, oh man, who did this? And they think it's funny. There's a couple of them, and I will go to their house and like go, which one? Wh- which one is it? And I'm like, can you please like log <laughs> in and take it out, please? Like I don't need to go on. Yeah. So, but here's what's interesting to me. When I look at it, the first question is, what is your Spotify thing? And, like, clearly that's, like, the only thing today that people understand is music. Other than the fact of what somebody physically looks like. That's yeah. it. See, and I don't I don't really have <clears throat> Spotify or anything. I don't either. Um, but, <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm still old school. I got my CDs <clears throat> with the jewel cases right. and the insert, everything. Because to me, that's... I don't know. I just but it's I, a sentimental thing. I, I think. find it so interesting. <laughs> like, like you know, like it, 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 for some reason they they pick with me. But I find some really interesting stuff out when I look at these things because yeah. these people spend thousands of dollars to 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 get the grasp of these people to stay on their site to pay them a monthly fee. Mm-hmm. That interests me. Okay. Um, and I hear people say, "Hey, I met somebody here, and I'm moving to four four states away." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, "Okay, cool." Yeah, shit, go I, ahead. I, I did the dating you know? site thing, and <clears throat> I don't miss that <laughs> at all. No, but know? but I hear I, horror I, stories like crazy, yeah. worse than any ghost hunt or anything that you ever go on. I've heard the worst of the worst of because mm-hmm. I've talked to women about. It. I've asked them because I was like curious, mm-hmm. and I was like. Are you serious? Yeah. Like, I've, you, you know, I've, it makes you scared it, to it, date. They try to make it look like it's not yeah. a hookup thing. But then when you, because I've had people contact it's me someone, yeah. interested. I, I could see guys being manipulative when, to try um, to get some booty. Well, for sure. you know, and yeah. when I would turn them down, they yeah. would be upset. Or Kip Matt, I'm sorry, I'm a self-respecting yeah. woman. Well, the, uh, well, actually, no, the, I'm not going to apologize for yeah. that. But, you know, that's your problem. Yeah. <laughs> the weirdest one I've heard from, from people that I've asked questions to were the ones where they said that, like, literally they were working out or something. And they're, it, like, they were working out or they were doing, like, a class. or And out of nowhere, like, somebody had messaged them, like, a hundred times. Wow. 
over and over and over again. And I was like, you joking. And they're like, no. And I said, dude, that's that's there's like some, borderline serial yeah, killer. So there's some crazy people. Because <laughs> I've, I've had to research a lot of the serial killer world. Yeah. So, like, literally, I'm like, you're, you're joking. Can I see a message like that? <laughs> like, I wanted to pay to see a message like that. I was like, whoa. You know, like, to me, that's where some of this problems in mental health possibly come from or dating websites. Possibly it's very possible because so. some of the stuff that I've seen, it's, it's, it's people right up hiding that alley. Behind, you know, they're, they're hiding uh-huh. behind a computer. It's a different form of a mask yeah. to hide behind. Well, we, you know, we, it's we, a digital <clears throat> mask they put on and they're not, you know, they're, they're behind a computer with a keyboard, you know. Mm-hmm. This is a good interview, by the way. <laughs> We're talking about all kind of craziness. But no, I look at that as a whole, like with music, okay? It's usually the third question you're asking someone. What do you listen to? Right. Because I'm going to tell you something. I've been in many relationships when I was younger. And um, <laughs> and like out of nowhere, I can't get along with someone who can't listen to some of my music. Right. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Like, I'm not doing it. You have to meet it. in the middle, at least. It's definitely <laughs> a prerequisite in your future. Right. And there's a lot of people that To be feel relaxed. Like that. Yeah. There's a lot of people. Um, I know my boyfriend and I, when we first met, you know, he he's more of like the punk rock, you know, kind right. of. Right. He didn't, he didn't really like the new metal kind of bands. Mm-hmm. And I, back in the day, I was into, you know, all the new metal stuff and... Um, so he picks on me sometimes about that, you know, but he likes like old country and, mm-hmm. and I like the old country and uh, we can agree on a lot of things, but we still have our differences, but we can meet in the middle. Right. No, so, and I think that's great. No, I yeah, think that's a good thing. It's important it, because it's, music is important. And so you have to have some kind of commonality there. Oh, and some you know, of, yeah. Oh, me, and some open, you have to be open minded. You know, I've, he. I, I'm a big Tori Amos fan. Mm-hmm. He's not, you know, but he's been open-minded. <laughs> he's even come to a concert with me. <laughs> yeah. And he's a huge Green Day fan. Mm-hmm. And I was never a big Green Day fan, but I've been very open-minded, mm-hmm. listened to, you know, some songs, and I would go to a concert with him if they ever come around, you know. So yeah. you have to be open-minded, and you have to give each other that, at least that much, Yeah. you know. I, I, I can't meet in the middle too much i'm very difficult <laughs> I well, it takes, uh, my it takes mu- an open mind and an open what, heart well no my music nobody listens to it it's <laughs> not happening i'm, I'm either uh, one I'm extreme sure to the next no I'm, mean, i go from frank sinatra ministry to like well yeah but I mean, yeah like the, my piano. boyfriend likes frank sinatra i you know he's he might be a punk yeah. guy but he likes sinatra a lot yeah. um i like ministry um so. but like people just you know with ministry the stuff like that and i listen to like <laughs> That was my whole reason for saying, hey, we need to rock Louisiana. I can't listen to, you know, this other genre all day. I can't. Mm -hmm. Because I have to listen to it. I mean, I have to, like, literally listen to it. Because I'm like, I look at the stats of the background of all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, people, like, literally left the station because this song came on. (laughs) You know, I'm like, they don't like it. Take it off. (laughs) Yeah, And I'm like, they look at me like, are you serious? I'm like, yes. So I'm the hatchet dude <laughs> when it comes to, but going around and, and seeing all the stuff I do, I see what people I'm looking, I'm watching what people are looking at. They probably think I'm the weirdest dude ever standing in a crowd looking for something that I'm not looking at. I'm watching the reaction, mm-hmm. you know, um, like Terry and the Zydeco bad boys, they get such a bad rap. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> when Terry's playing, there is not one person not ready to dance, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, I, I see the same thing with Gino, but I'm going to tell you something. Terry, <laughs> he, he makes it. people <laughs> dance, man. Like, you know, and, and I don't know. I don't know. I know him other than telling him hi. And he knows I take a picture every now and then, but he don't know me. Mm-hmm. But I'm being serious about that. And speaking of pictures, um, <clears throat> that's another thing. When I went through my old photographs, mm-hmm. I went through some old band pictures, local bands and local shows that I used yeah. to go to. Because I used to always want to be that person with the past that gets into the concert and gets in the very front and is able to take the pictures. I used to always want to be that person. So, um, you can do but that. I always took, uh, I always took photos of bands mm-hmm. and stuff and I missed that too. Um, and I know at downtown live, um, 
I had taken a picture of his Otico band. I can't think of it. It's right on the tip of my tongue. Can't think of it offhand. But um, such a great, a great band. And um, every time I've seen them, same thing. I mean, just gets the crowd going, you know. And I had some really good. Pictures I want to know who this is. Well, who's who's Gosh, it? Men or women? I, it was men. And the, they, there was a little boy. One of the sons of the mm -hmm. uh, musicians came up on stage, and was he it was Steve Riley. No, because um, his son will go up, come up on stage every now and then. It, this was a while <clears throat> back, though. This oh. was back in like, um, I think it was my senior year of college, like two thousand six. <laughs> I was in a photojournalism class, and uh, I did, you know, I was doing some pictures for that, and I did a scrapbook in mm -hmm. the end, and. Um, the teacher actually was impressed with my work. She wanted me to come back to She said, like, I want you to take my class next semester. I said, I'm <clears> sorry, <throat> I'm graduating this semester. <laughs> you need to get you a camera. <laughs> I, I'm working on that, actually. Yeah, I mean, so. <laughs> you know, like you do. I mean, I, I mean, you, you sound like you really need to do this. I do have um, <clears throat> a couple of old cameras. My granny had a, an old, actually I have an old Polaroid <laughs> Right. camera she well, used to love polaroids i don't recommend shooting fast photos with a polaroid no no <laughs> um but i am working on getting you know um an actual a nice you know i recommend the nikon d7000 i had an icon a while back but I've, I, it was just a regular little 35 millimeter but I, it was I, a nice camera people think i'm crazy i have every camera you can imagine <clears throat> I just bought one that's twenty seven hundred dollar base. I still like my seven thousand. Okay, I have two of them, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, get a seven thousand. If you learn on that camera, you will love it. Well, I'll have to take make a note of that before I, I, I leave. You, you, you will <laughs> definitely, definitely <get> <laughs> change your mind about a lot of stuff after you take pictures with that camera. Yeah, well, I know my little 35 millimeter Nikon from a while mm -hmm. back took some darn good pictures too, and mm -hmm. that was just a regular little camera I kept in my car. Yeah, I and think you're. No I think you're gonna. I think you. I see a show coming in the future for Kylie because, like, literally, if you were taking pictures of bands and you know, you have it's 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 a practice. I started taking pictures of bands only because I needed to practice for boxing. Yeah, I, I did yeah. it because I went to a lot of concerts, and I really was passionate about getting the musician, getting them right in a, in that moment, getting that special moment. It's you know, it's not about right. missing what's going on in the show, because some people think, oh, well, you're taking pictures, you're not watching the show, and people will get You're forced upset. to watch the show but through, a, through a small little lens. I'm watching the show, but yeah. I'm trying to capture that special moment, mm -hmm. you know, that, that musician, that that. That right. moment that music gives us, those emotions and those things yeah. that emulate from being at the live concert and the experience yeah. and what the band's experiencing <laughs> on stage, it's like, See, you know, it's magic. Kyla, you're a <laughs> photographer. You need to be. You need to get to buy your camera. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Yeah. I'm being Got serious. Got that in the works. <laughs> no, I'm being dead serious about that. Like, I don't hear photographers talk about stuff, talk about pictures like that. I don't. Uh, that was know? something that, you know, uh, since the fourth grade, uh, ever since I started that in 4-H, it just became mm -hmm. sort of like a passion. And when I started going to concerts, I realized, like, I really like getting these moments here. And when I go mm -hmm. through my pictures, you know, I'm like, wow, this is an amazing picture of, you know, of this person really in this moment, you know. Um, so, and actually... Probably some of the older bands, like the local bands from back in the day, I'd love to, you know, resurface those photos. They may want to. Uh, <laughs> I've thought about contacting some of those guys and being like, "Hey, I have these old photos." <laughs> they would love that. Yeah. You know, and it, and honestly, you know, when you get your another you, your other camera, I would take photos of those photos and put them mm -hmm. in, in the digital format and show them that again because they would freak <laughs> out if they saw that. Yeah. You know. Oh, I know, and and that's why. Like, I, I would write an article about that. <laughs> yeah, you know? I, and put I, those pictures like like you know you'd have to put something on them because people would steal them. People today are so interestingly amazing with that that <laughs> they will. It's y an it, amazingly it, it, you, interesting <clears throat> world today. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it, you know, but you're gonna have to take something and even if it's just aerial font and just put your name copyright Kyler Brinkman on it, you know, and and just put the year in, and that way people can't. Mm 
you know, be they interestingly awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to call it. <laughs> and, uh, but no, I mean, it's true. Like, but, you know, it's going to happen. Somebody's going to do it. Um, but when, when you start getting to that point, like I have a picture of the Hilton before it was a double tree. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize how interesting that picture was until it became the double tree. Yeah. So like, I know one day when I put that picture online one day in the next, you know, 10 years, if I'm still here, people will be like, man, that, that's so interesting. We didn't even know that it was there. You yeah. Know? To me, or that's, you'll have people that say, oh, mm-hmm. I remember that when it was the Hilton and right. before it became the double tree. Yeah. I mean, I'm still amazed that the bridge on Pinhook is there. <laughs> you know, it's true. I mean, wh- what are we doing with bridges like that right now? Yeah. Still to this day, like, why? why are, what, what is that doing there? You know, they well, well. After looking at Verot, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> is it Verot or Vero? Verot. I say Verot. I say, okay, but, but you know what I'm saying? Like, mm, don't get any ideas. On I Pinhook. haven't been on Verot since they've. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm planning on trying to avoid it altogether. Well, I, I, I actually drove the, on it last <laughs> night. It was really funny. It took 14 years to get to the point where you could drive. You used to drive on two lanes inside mm-hmm. the highway. Now yeah. you're driving on two lanes outside the highway, right. and they're working in the middle. It took 14 years <laughs> to, well, get, to get to the behind, edge. But you know we're getting there slowly so but funny. surely. But that's frustrating so the funny. entire Lafayette population at the same time. But, and you know. I don't really think it's going to help at all. I mean, well, to, to we me, can only hope it. You who, know. Whoever decided that was a good idea, they're probably fired 15 years ago. <laughs> whoever decided a bike lane was good downtown on Second Street was should be fired. Um, okay. Yeah. That's funny. That is funny. Anybody from Lafayette or have been they to took Lafayette, our two lane. you're going to laugh at that one. I know. Except the city. They're not going to laugh at that one. Okay. <laughs> one more thing we're going to get to. Um, we, we, uh, this started, this, I, I started, I think I messaged Kylie. I, Kylie was talking about turning, turning 40. Big four, oh. Right. Yeah. And like everybody, you know, like everybody's so scared of that, you know. And I know it is weird. Because I, you know, I remember being 30 <clears throat> and thinking to myself, Okay, I'm 30. I think I was more stressed about turning 30 than I am about turning 40. Mm -hmm. Turning 40 is a different type of, uh, not stress necessarily, but it's a different type of a reflection, I guess. Yeah, (laughs) I mean, to to me, because you you turned 40 when, like in two weeks? Actually, um, Monday the 9th. Okay, this Monday. I turned 40 at the end of May. So I was like, you know what? Let's talk about this because some <laughs> the people don't like to talk about this. Yeah, it's not a uh, you know. Well, and the people that have already passed forty, you know, they're they're over it. They, they look they, at you like there, they've been there. Oh, that. just get through it. <laughs> it's so nothing. Yes. You know, like and I'm like, I get it. You know, but I have people that it's it i feel strange sometimes because people look at me and they go man we didn't even know you were married because i've been married before people are like there's no way so am i that rowdy that people just think i could never be married that's funny to me uh, i don't know <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think i'm that bad I, to me, I'm, I, I don't know you well enough to say if you're like rowdy but no but like <laughs> it's just funny to me like when people say things like that it's like what like i would never tell them. anybody can but be married know. You know what they say and what they've been saying for years now that 40 is the new 20. So I'm embracing I gotta, 40. I have to in agree with that. that way. Because I do feel like I'm having a sense of a renewal mm-hmm. of life, but it's a different type of thing. Um, for me, when I turned 20, that I mean, when I turned um, 30, it was depressing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm turning 30. It was a big deal, but. You know, 40, here I am 10 years later, and Mm -hmm. I don't feel that way. The only, I think the only thing, you know, as a woman turning 40, you know, um, it's like, okay, well, I don't have any kids, you know, haven't been married. Um, So I think sometimes, and it doesn't matter what kind of woman you are. That's not a bad thing, by the way. (laughs) Whether you say you want kids or you don't want kids or whatever, I think every woman at some point in her life... Mm -hmm. 
you know, by the time she turns 40, if she doesn't have kids, she starts to feel like a failure in a way. Really? Like you didn't do your job as a woman. You didn't procreate. That's what you're mm-hmm. here to do. That's what you're supposed to do. And that's what your family and stuff starts to kind of, you know, once I hit about 37, people are like, uh, so when are you getting married? When are you going to have kids? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's but, a lot of pressure. But, but Kylie, but, you know what? I, this is what I always say to people. Like, it's your life. Yes. And exactly. clearly you believe that i have come to terms with the fact that you know if i don't have a kid then it was just meant to be it wasn't meant to be um i have you know i have three uh really wonderful nephews i have a beautiful Mm -hmm. goddaughter you know i'm just gonna be that cool aunt with the fur babies you know Mm -hmm. and i'm i'm good with that i've resigned to that if if you know and i mean if it does happen it happens but if it doesn't I've accepted it, you know, yeah. and I'm just trying to embrace, you know, this part of my life, this coming into, um, with, uh, you know, with love and acceptance. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I agree. I mean, you know, I, I, I it's so weird in Louisiana. Well, I guess it's everywhere, you know, with parents, you know, um, you going to get married, you know, like, like I'm like. <laughs> You know, I remember my first time I was ever married was 24, and I can tell you right now, if if I had someone that actually sat me down and said, "Do you think you want to get married?" If they asked me that three times, I probably should not have done that <laughs> at 24. So, and I'm not saying everybody needs to go do that. When I look back on that situation, definitely not. So yeah. it's it's definitely know, not um, a good idea for a me. A couple years ago, I struggled really bad with that, and um. You know, because I'm I'm the oldest of four. Right. My brother is the only boy. I have two younger sisters and my brother. And my brother is was the first one married, mm-hmm. first one divorced, first one to remarry, <laughs> first one to have a kid. <laughs> he had a kid for his first wife. Uh, you know, um, right. a really really wonderful nephew, um, Austin. And then um, now he has another child with mm-hmm. his second wife, and he's. You know, they're happy, they're doing good, beautiful family, uh, you know, and my sis, both of my sisters are now married, um, have kids, so, you know, I, I struggled with it a couple of years ago, because I was mm. feeling the pressure of like, okay, I'm the only one, no kids, no marriage, <laughs> you know, what's what's going to become of me, you know, like, I'm the black sheep now, I guess, and, you know, so... But, uh, you know, I've, I've dealt with that. It was hard at the time. But, you know, because, like, you know, going to family functions, you know, I kind of felt left out. Like, I'm the one with, there's no husband, there's no kid, there's, <laughs> you know. Um, and at weddings and funerals and things like that, mm-hmm. uh, even funerals, yes, it's kind of weird. You know, you start to feel like uh, the outcast, the black sheep and all that. So, um, and sometimes, you know, when people are like, so when are you going to, yeah. you know, when are you going to have kids? When are you going to get married? And that's what I was kind of feeling. But, you know, over time I've accepted the fact that, you know what, my nephews and my goddaughter, I'm happy with spoiling them mm-hmm. <laughs> and being that cool aunt that they can come to and talk to about stuff that maybe they can't, don't feel comfortable with their parents, you know? Right. Um, so I'm, I'm cool with that, you know, and my boyfriend and I have said like, well, you know, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, whatever, we're just going to get a bunch of fur babies and be those crazy, you know, dog people or cat people. Yeah. (laughs) And I think, you know, the fact that y'all can have a conversation is good Mm -hmm. because people can't sometimes have conversations about that. I mean, everything's got to be like, you know, that discussion, (laughs) it's somewhere that people don't want to go. And I think that if y'all can do that. That tells you right there that you're you're probably with the right guy. Yeah, because you know I mean? well, and I told him I'm like you know <laughs> I've even told him a couple times. Well, I'm I'm an old lady now. He's a few years younger than me, um, so I, I'm like, you sure you don't want to you know go find you know because you can find a younger woman if you want <laughs> if you really want a kid you can find a younger fertile you're, woman that can trip. give you what you want. You know, he's like, no. He's like, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't. We'll just ha- we'll just be fur ba- fur parents, you know, and and he's cool with that. So I said, well, all right, <laughs> well, I got a good one. Then he's gonna have to <laughs> deal with the fact that you're a photographer because you're about to. You, I got a feeling 
Kylie Brinkman's going to be hitting some photography <laughs> in the next year and a half after hearing this interview. <laughs> but you see what's cool? Like, when people hear this, you know, it, it people learn from this because it's true. Like, if they're stressing their kids out about what you just said, they can hear it from a different perspective and say, you know what? I'm bothering my kid. Doesn't yeah, matter how old you get. I mean, it still and bothers it, and, you. And I don't think the intention uh, was <coughs> yeah. to make me feel that way. Right. I, I don't but think people that's just the talk intention. And sometimes you know, they don't but, know what they're, they're, yeah. they're saying. Sometimes it just, it's, it, it's right. already, you're already, you already have enough societal pressure. Mm-hmm. And then you're putting the pressure on yourself. Right. And you know, time, you know, for me, I know time is running out. There's an hourglass and yeah. I see the sand. Dripping yeah. down, and it's like right. little to nothing left. It's like right? being a sophomore all over again. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it it's just it is a learning experience, and you know, for me, it was one of acceptance about you know this is the way it is. I can't change it. You know, if 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 it wasn't meant to be, it just wasn't meant to be in my life, and I'm okay with that. Sure, I would love to know what my kid would look like or act like. You know, right. that would be fun. But, you know, and there's always adoption, too, mm-hmm. if, if we should ever decide, you know, if we never, you know, if, if we never get pregnant, there's always that option, too. So, you know, there's many things out there, but, you know, uh, so when you're, yeah, when your family is asking you questions and it's like, okay, well, you got family pressure, you got yourself pressuring, you know, your society is saying, you know, this is what... Mm -hmm. You need to be, this is what you need to do. And really, you know, people just need to, like you said, it's your life. Overall, at the the end of the day, it's your life. And they need to accept it. You know, you Mm -hmm. need to accept it, but they also need to accept that if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. Right. So, and that's okay. Look, I don't have any children. You know, I have a, I have, I, I have a, I had a stepdaughter that I still, if she needs anything, feel free to call Mm -hmm. because i will help you any way possible but i mean literally i mean i i understand completely i completely get it so it's 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 um you know from both sides it's uh uh, it's interesting you know but sometimes i just have to go and write and eat a hamburger (laughs) (laughs) you know that's usually what i do but like you know i um I get it, though, you know, because I have a mother that does the same thing. Do you think uh, you might get married again? <laughs> I'm like, mother, we're not having this discussion. That's how it ends, like, right away. Yeah. You know? But some people can't say that to their mother, mm-hmm. you know? I, I'm just happy that me and my mother have discussed every, a lot. I mean, That's we, good, though. We have talked I mean, about many good. things. So, like, um... And we kind of go back and forth at each other a lot, you know. Mm-hmm. But and I think some people don't understand that. <laughs> well, my uh, boyfriend and his yeah. mom are like that, yeah. you know. But um, some people don't have those kind of relationships mm-hmm. with their parents. You know, they may have a relationship where they can talk to their parents about certain things, but they know that there are certain things their right. parents won't understand. You know, unfortunately, I don't have um, that relationship where right. you know I'm close to my mom. You know, and my, me and my mom talk a lot. You know, but she. <laughs> You know, and uh, she'll give me a hard time about stuff, but that's okay. You know, that's what moms do sometimes. Sometimes um, it's a good thing, you know. But, um, you know, my mom is like a saint, you know. She'll, at the same time, she'll be there to help somebody if they need help, right. you know. Or she'll give to, I've been involved in some community or uh, things where, you know, I've done a benefit for um, the Faith House. I've done stuff with the Alzheimer's Association. Um, right. Last year, I did have some health issues, so I wasn't able to put in as much uh, to it, so I wasn't as involved, but I'm trying to get back into it. And you know, my mom was always there supporting, mm-hmm. and and you know, any anything, well, she'll be there at the first one to donate <clears throat> to something. You know, <laughs> well, in today's world, trust me, moms hear stories like you would not believe, and and that's when they realize how proud of their children. I think that they mm-hmm. are. Whenever you know, because I mean, hey, you know what? It's not strange today to hear, hey, you know what? So and so's doing this or doing that. Yeah, y- y- your mother couldn't be more proud. I pr- I can assure you. So I mean, I-, I I see it from every angle and every aspect, and it it, it can be a little crazy, you know, especially up in Church Point. <laughs> but but. <laughs> 
Well, you know, I always said I feel like I'm more from Lafayette than Church Point, and it's nothing against Church Point itself. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. You know, I was born here. I lived here half my life. I've worked here. It's like my life is pretty much Lafayette, you know. I've gotten out of a small town into a little bit of a bigger town, and Mm. I've always been more of a uh, a socialite, you know. I kind of like that Lafayette's like the perfect size. You can always meet somebody new, but then you always run into somebody you know (laughs) kind of thing. And then when you get too t- when you get tired of Lafayette, you can go hang out in Church Point for a weekend. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, and go go hang out with the fam and <laughs> eat some good home cooked food. It's kind of funny because my I was adopted, and my sister grew up in Church Point. Really, and I'll never forget driving to Church Point <laughs> to meet her. So. Um, that was interesting. That, you know, yeah, there's you, a few you, different routes you can take. And, you know, a lot of those nature pictures yeah. and the trees and stuff that I would take pictures of, mm-hmm. they'd be in random spots, you know, in the different, you know, rural areas you drive through to get to Church Point mm-hmm. and f- to and from. Yeah, so. but that is, you know, and that's the interesting, it, 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 it just reminded me of that. You know, Have you but, ever had uh, rods, plate lunches? I, I don't eat plate lunches. Well, I, I'm one of those weird individuals. That I I'm telling I don't you, don't eat them anymore. This is like, going to sound great, I, but I'm, I really have. <laughs> th- I am. I'm telling you, I should win a world record for this because I really have eaten a hamburger every day since I was probably about ten or wow. nine or ten years old. That is a record. So, like, you know. Well, I will I, say I have to plug rods in Church Point. Um, mm-hmm. They have some of the best home cooked meals. You could get, and um, well, you know, had- when I lived there, mm-hmm. uh, I would I was working, I was working out a lot and dancing a lot, and so <laughs> I would come home and I would just be so hungry, so I would stop at Rods and I would get one of those little. Going they Rods. have them in the uh, the cold box, you know, the mm-hmm. little half plate lunch things right. they do. Oh man, they oh, make, I have to photograph they make a enough mean of them. Stew. I- yeah, I know what all of it is, and I've had to eat all of it. But I'm telling you right now, when when I'm hungry, I want a hamburger. Yeah, there is no question about it. So it's, well, I'm mostly like a pasta <coughs> person, but mm-hmm. you know, I don't eat as much of the rice and gravy and stuff anymore. But fettuccine um, alfredo is my favorite. Oh, so that's like, some good stuff, know, especially good across stuff. the street. At Cafe yeah, Bella right there. That, that, if you've never had the Cafe Bella, you know, I've never it's had a good. pasta from there. I've never had mm-hmm. pasta from there before, but yes. They have right. pasta Sicilian and, and everything, every pasta they have there is good. Uh, I love pasta. I could eat it morning, noon, yeah. and night. <laughs> it's, it's, they have a seven layer lasagna. Wow. That sounds that's, good. that's pretty amazing. So I, sounds I, like I might need to go over there one day and have a sampler. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it, I recommend it completely, you know. Um, without a doubt, I do. I, I I think that Cafe Bella sometimes is forgotten about. Um, because people don't, you know, they used to be Bella Figura, and then, you know, they they, they moved in the mm-hmm. River Ranch area, and next thing you know, they they were in another place, and then they, then they moved here. But I I I I'm telling you, they they have dishes here that you can't find any other place except Italy. Yeah, I think Asobuco, <clears throat> it might be found maybe one other place in the United States. So it's it's pretty interesting, you know, but um you know, and he still will make me a hamburger and not curse <laughs> me out. The, I've been cursed out in quite a few languages by asking for a hamburger in places. So it's been oh, wow. it, it, that's why it's, <laughs> it's been fun. It has been fun. But no, um yeah, it some think it's a problem, but <laughs> it's really not. You know, I think knowing what you want is that's is a, a good yeah, thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. It's not a bad thing, people. It's better than uh, my boyfriend <clears throat> always jokes around a lot. Like, the, you know that that meme on Facebook with the uh, the notebook? What do you want? What do you want to eat? With women? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that's a big deal with women. <laughs> I know. It. I mean, I, I'm usually, you know, I'm... Yeah. I can decide, but then sometimes <clears throat> I'm, I am indecisive. So. I, could, I could tell you right now, if I have... If I ever have another relationship or marriage again, I will have a notebook in the car <laughs> that will say, list of places we should eat, and we will choose from those lists. Yeah, I mean, Cause I'm like, my boyfriend would tag me in that, you know, and me? we just laugh about it because, it you know, I'm like, well, yeah. I know I can be indecisive, <clears throat> you know, in the typical, when it comes to that, but at the same time, you know, the go-to is always pasta, mm-hmm. always. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah. No, that's not a problem. Pasta and chocolate. 
pasta and chocolate. <laughs> yes, my name is Kylie, and I'm a chocoholic. I, I like chocolate too, you know. But Some good stuff. Pasta That's and chocolate. Stuff. Especially chocolate, like from overseas. Yeah. yeah. That's the best. I, I, I wish that I could have seen your face whenever the dance instructors are like, you can't have that chocolate donut. <laughs> I, 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 I would have liked to have Well, you see, the thing it, is, it's taken it wasn't a photo even me that. that they addressed. It was another girl, and it was just like yeah. the way. And I think she was like, she ended up Oh, they can be brutal. And they was, can be brutal. You know, and, and, and she was a beautiful dancer, too. Mm-hmm. Beautiful dancer. And she was a little bit bigger of a girl, but they were just giving her such a hard time by what she was eating. And <laughs> I, was, I was skinny at that time because mm-hmm. I didn't have time to eat. I was working and doing dance, you know, be also being a dance major mm-hmm. put a lot of strain physically on me and a lot of my time. Like if you mm-hmm. went to school part time, you were really going full time. Mm-hmm. If you were taking a one credit course, it wasn't just an hour. It was an hour and a half, two hours kind of thing. Yeah. So it was a it was a lot. So, yeah. And then that cheat meal was rods <clears throat> at Church Point. You Church know, Point uh, actually had some pretty good hamburgers, too, by the way. Oh yeah, they got good barbecue burgers and there's a, just there's, good. There's, yeah, there's like well, there's a house that I think in Church Point they used to make hamburgers, some I think cafe I know what deal. About. Yeah, and yeah, then there's a guy a named Uncle Lee that works at Fizo's and Scott, and he has that. He knows that recipe. He makes me those burgers oh, every nice. now and then. And I, I mean, yeah, there's quite a few places. I mean, I've had to go to so many places, but I got to stop talking about burgers because I won't show <laughs> that. Everybody knows Church Point <clears throat> for Sunny's Fried Chicken. That's what they know. But yeah. I live. Now I live on the north side of Lafayette, and I mm-hmm. live not far from Fat Albert's. So, right. you know, I'll go and get the baked chicken dinner, which I know it's not fried chicken, but it's still good. <laughs> no, it, I mean, they make baked chicken, they're, too? They're, yeah, they do a baked chicken dinner. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I remember driving through Lafayette when I was in high school, and I remember seeing Mama's Fried Chicken. <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, it, it really was the greasiest chicken I've ever <laughs> had in my I think life. It's, I think they're still open, like in Opelousas. I think there's two of them, but the, the, yeah. the people say there's one particular the, location that's better yeah, than the other. Yeah, it something. probably is. <laughs> it, but I'm telling you, I mean, when, you're, when, you're car, when your grease is going through the cardboard, yeah, it's on fire, y'all. It's, it's, <laughs> it's on fire. Like, that's Mama's Fried Chicken. We're, I like to talk about food places because people that are from from other countries they hear us talk about this and they go, oh wait, I gotta go check this out. Yeah, you know, because you know, depending on where you go here and mm-hmm. ask for a food place, they always give you those particularly three <laughs> places that really no like one here goes. Like the more goes. touristy uh, yeah, places, like, yeah. yeah like, the best places are those little nook and crannies, the the mom and pops, mm-hmm. the. You know, uh, those little gyms that, you know, people just don't really know about. P- even people here don't, you know, realize, like, oh, that place is there. <laughs> like, nobody would believe that they could come here and get really good Italian food. Yeah. Or, you know, like, uh, hamburgers. There are literally, like, 125 places within eight parishes that sell hamburgers in this area. Mm-hmm. To me, we should be classified as one of the best places to get a hamburger in the world. Probably so. I, yeah. I, I, I mean, you're looking I, at Cajun country. You're looking at all well, kinds of types of burgers yeah, everywhere. That's, that's why I talk <laughs> about it so much because people don't realize it, you know. I mean, I've been all over the place, you know, to get burgers. And, like, New Orleans, they even asked me, hey, because we have a hamburger dot com. Why don't y'all make a Crescent City burger? You know, I'm like, dude, y'all can't handle it. Like, seriously. I mean, I grew up in Homa. I would drive to New Orleans every weekend. Yeah. They couldn't deal with it. They can't they can't they don't have that many hamburgers. They might have they might have <laughs> about sixteen spots. We have hundred and twenty five in Acadiana. Yeah, that's that's, that's serious. <laughs> yeah, that's you know? a serious serious burgers. <laughs> I mean not only that, there's eight of them within one mile of each other. And they all make a living. Mm-hmm. Then you go down another mile, there's another six. So I mean, people. Yeah. Trust me, <laughs> if there was no beef in this town, it would hurt. I'll believe it. It would. Yep. It would be an economic collapse. <laughs> so <laughs> stop with all that. Stop with all that vegan. No burgers. We need them burgers. Detriment to, I was, I'm to the just city. joking. I'm just picking. I like. I like to talk about the burger thing because pe- people are like, this dude talks about burgers all day and night. 
All right. <laughs> now, I asked Kylie, I said, in 40 years, what are some things that you feel that you have learned? Because, <laughs> you know, we, we do kind of tend to want to learn some stuff. and Well, you, you got to learn from all the mistakes you've made in your life so far and move forward with that. Right. You know, um, not making those same mistakes. I mean, obviously, by the time you're 40, you should be wise enough to <laughs> to know. Go ahead. I'm going to let her read what she wrote because it's pretty good. <laughs> so You don't want to hear it from me. <clears throat> so I put uh, no regrets about yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, I've learned a lot of life lessons. Don't take your loved ones for granted. Um, don't take today for granted. And say I love you every day. Um, especially to, you know, if you're talking with your mom or your dad on the phone, end with I love you always, always, because you just don't know. Um, unfortunately, this year, between my boyfriend and I, we've lost several people uh, in our lives that we've mm-hmm. loved, and it's already, it's only uh, just the fourth month is only beginning. So um, you can't take for granted the people in your life. Always a... Uh, Always find a way to, to let them know that you love them and that you care. Um, because they may not be here tomorrow. You know, and that's one thing I try to keep in mind with my own family. If I'm on the phone mm-hmm. with my mom, if I'm on the phone with my sisters, my brother, my boyfriend. You know, I try to say in that call with I love you. Because you don't know if that's the last thing you're going to say to them. And it's true. It really is true. And, um, you know. You know, it, it is an interesting call when you get those phone calls. You know, yeah, and you and, always wonder, like, you know, did I did I say I love you? Did I, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and and it's not even so much really about that. It's just you know, sometimes you know, if somebody's not going to be here tomorrow, you want them the last words that you say to them to be something positive. Yeah, you know, I love you, or you know, you mean a lot to me, or I, you know, I'm here for you. Yeah. It's something. One of the, I talk about the the patterns of influence all the time. Like you don't know anything about any of the stuff I do with this, but like I talk about the patterns of influence. How do you influence people, and how do they influence you? And I see people say all the time, uh, like we had a schoolmate that just passed away, probably about probably about a month ago, and so many people like just came out and and talked about their last memory, about what his influence was on the people, even way back in junior high school. Yeah. You know, to me, that's, that's interesting, mm-hmm. you know, because I mean, everybody goes to that memory of the last memory that you saw when, cause nobody wants to hear anything bad, but you want right. to praise that person's life. You always want to remember the good things, and of course. <clears throat> it's always interesting to me to see what people say, you mm-hmm. know, cause on KATC, <laughs> they're talking about something a whole lot different in those comments, you know? But when, whenever it comes to someone that was influential in a positive way, mm-hmm. you can't, you can't, I, and, and, you know, they're just bombarding it with positivity. I think that's awesome. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> well, and I think, you know, the younger you are, you know, when you're, <laughs> when you're in your, in high school and in college years, you think you're invincible. And right, and sometimes you are. I thought I was invincible. <laughs> you know, like I did. I'm surprised I'm still alive today. Mm-hmm. You know, after everything. You know, and I know everybody's had their own journey in life, but you know, I've been through some things and maybe done some things people would have never guessed about mm-hmm. me. But at the same time, again, it's a learning thing. And as you get older, you experience more loss. Unfortunately, you see yeah. more more death and you experience it more often so your sense of mortality really comes alive because you're like okay well our bodies are just a shell you know this is just a shell of who we are Mm -hmm. and we only have this one body this one life so you know why not make a positive impact with it and that's what that's what i try to do i hope i'm accomplishing that somewhat so far (laughs) in my life Mm -hmm. So, um, and do something you love and that you're passionate about outside of the everyday hustle and bustle, you know, find something that makes you happy. Um, because I really think that you were talking about mental health earlier. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, people that do have suffer from depression, anxiety and other disorders, you know, could really 
you know, really benefit from music, right. dance, the arts, uh, any kind of arts. I mean, think about it. When, when you go, when you're looking for a way to escape something, you want to go out a not, on a night on the town, what are you going to do? You going to go see a band somewhere or are you going to go to no. a movie? So it's like we want to <clears> suspend <throat> our disbelief. We want to have that outlet, right? So um, I just think it's so important. It is. It really is. I mean, it. It's, I, it's important to treat yourself, you know, somehow yeah. to that. <laughs> yeah. I, Every now and then. When, I, when you. Okay, like we have Rock Louisiana, we have Radio Louisiana, and then we have another one that was called Fitness Radio. And we're, we're, we're transitioning Fitness Radio into Louisiana Dance Radio. Because nice. I wanted it to be coined after Louisiana, because we have so many different reasons. We have a lot of DJs in this area. And, you know, a lot of these people, they feel like, you know, well, I, I, where can I go? You know? So I, 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 I like that, you know? I like that info. I mean, the, the country scene here is so big that literally they can go anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, um, and if they can't, I'll make one. You know? So it's, I mean, and that's why we haven't done it yet, just in case anybody's wondering. Because we do have people that wonder that. So, um, yeah. and that's the reason why, you know, um, to me, when I used to hear these, and I still hear it, you know, when they talk about rock music and how it's, it's negative and all this stuff and the things that they say and all this, stuff, it doesn't matter what you think, you know, I say this to people all the time. If it influences someone to do something positive on the way to doing something positive, then that should be enough. You know, um, at one point they, they said Chuck Berry's music was non-influential, but yet I talk to thousands of people and say, who were your influences? And they say, Chuck Berry, Yeah. <laughs> you know, Chuck Berry wasn't perfect, mm-hmm. but neither am I or, or anyone else. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I look at that and I go, you know what? I think sometimes opinions and judgment really get in the way of us and, and maybe our, our look at what we see so mm. you keep doing what you do and i say this to everyone you know whatever makes you happy continue to do that yep. that's the truth it is you know? truth so truth louisiana <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite thing about louisiana um the culture and the people obviously i mean you know anytime a tragedy strikes Louisiana, we rise up from it. And mm-hmm. why is that? Because we're there for each other. You yeah. know, regardless of race, politics, and all mm-hmm. that other BS that people throw out, you know, yeah. on social media and everything, um, which I'm tired personally yeah. of seeing and hearing. But, you know, it, it we come together as a people, as a community, mm-hmm. as a state. And whether whether the politicians are on board or helping us out or not, we're we're going to find a way to help each other. And that's something that I just have always loved about Louisiana. Mm-hmm. And just it's just a great place to be from. It's a great place to live. You know, we have so much culture, and we're so rich in that. And we have all these great festivals. And Louisiana, just right. South Louisiana in general, is just it's, it's a celebration of life. Mm-hmm. I mean, you come over here... You eat the food, you go to a festival, you, you hear the music, you watch the people, and you can't help but just be like, wow, this is what it's about. You know, this is life. This yeah. is what it's about. Yeah. I, so. I agree. I agree. I mean, like, you know, I enjoy listening. Like, <laughs> we have a, a documentary coming soon with uh, Horace Traha about the Creole, you know, where the music came, you know, just the, everything about the Creole uh, culture. Right. Um. You know, when, when you come out with something like that, you know the people really are interested in your culture whenever they look at it and they really give it a, pay attention to it. And well, we're just we're a melting pot. Yeah. So many different cultures rolled into one. We're yeah. like a we're a fusion of a fusion of a few. You know, it's it can go on forever, yeah. and I love it. You know, our well, story is a never ending story. Yeah. So. One thing I love about Creole people is they will tell you the truth. <laughs> they are not afraid to tell you the truth, and to me, I think that's. A learning experience for everyone that comes here mm-hmm. you're gonna get the truth mm-hmm. and I, I've talked to people from Seattle in New Orleans and for years that you know they say well, the reason we come here 
is because there's nowhere else like this. Mm-hmm. We know we can talk to people. <laughs> um, and, and it's kind of interesting to me because, you know, um, I say those areas, like Philadelphia is another. I've talked to many people during football, uh, you know, games, and they all say it's the only place like this. So yeah. to me, honesty is what makes Louisiana number one. Um, and as long as I think we can stick with that and, 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 you know, honesty is pretty much, it goes a long way, you know, but yeah, Kylie, definitely. I know there's one other thing that you want to talk about. I know that you have something coming up, uh, in July. Uh, yeah. So I just, I wanted to plug, um, uh, Bayou Belly Festival. Okay. Um, it's called Bayou Belly because it originated as a festival within the belly dance community of mm-hmm. Louisiana. Um, my friend started the face. My friend Robin started the mm-hmm. uh, Facebook group, and um, we've added so many belly dancers from not only Louisiana but other states that are now coming to the festival. It's an annual festival. Um, mm-hmm. Tribe Habibi Bazaar, which I'm also a part of, puts on the festival every year. And um, this year it's going to be July 13th through the 15th. It's an opportunity for the belly dance community to take workshops from world-renowned belly dancers right. throughout the world, you know, or other states and internationally. And um, it's a wonderful opportunity to learn and um you know, brush up on technique or get new inspiration. We also do two shows. A Friday, we're going to have a Friday the 13th show, which will be really fun. And we also do a Saturday show. And they're held at Burke Theater at UL. Mm -hmm. Um, The classes are also on the UL campus. And it's open to not just belly dancers, but, you know, anybody who's interested in getting into belly dance, there's there's classes for all different levels, beginner through intermediate. So... Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to kind of learn about it, take a beginner course, go to the uh, Facebook Bayou Belly Festival, look it up on Facebook or Google it and and go to the uh, site and check it out. And um, the tickets are for sale. Um, And so that's one thing uh, that we look forward to every year. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's a lot of inspiration. Great opportunity to come out and even if you don't want to take a class come out to one of the shows and check it out because <clears throat> there's many different styles and forms of belly dance that people don't realize exist <laughs> they think belly dance is one thing but it's really so many different things and if you come to a show you'll you'll get it you'll understand mm-hmm. but you only really can understand the f- and fully grasp it if you go to an actual show so, um, again, the tickets for the shows are also on sale um, on the site, and um, that's pretty much it. But both of my troops are performing, um, Tribe Habibi Bazaar, as well as uh, Detalu Tribal Fusion Belly Dance. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can look both troops up on Facebook. Go give us a, some likes, some love, <laughs> um, and we hope to see y'all. Cool. Well, so. thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. This that, is great. And, and it just shows me anyone, ask anyone to do an interview because this is probably one of the best interviews. I, I, I loved it. Oh, thank it had you a, so We much. had a blast. We talked about a lot of stuff. <laughs> you're going to make me blush now. <laughs> no, but you're not nervous anymore. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Like now it's not a big deal. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, you know, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you know, and after that day. Gonna half, be half celebrating, of that crazy stuff you're going to worry about. Going to be celebrating next week. So, you know, anybody yeah. who's on board, um, it's it, my birthday's Monday, but I'm thinking about celebrating Friday the 13th, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I think that would be fun. My boyfriend's scheming something. He's planning and plotting something of a surprise. So, we'll yeah. see. <laughs> well, hey. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thanks for coming. This was good. This was a good yeah. idea. It was fun. Like that, once again, thank you for listening to Radio Louisiana, and uh, we'll put some links on the blog area so you can find Kylie and, and her troops. Thank you, sure. and thank you all for listening. Have a good day. You too. <laughs>